welcome to the show, my friend, Danny Johnson. How are you? Uh, doing great. Thank you for having me on, Jay. Absolutely, Danny. We're glad to have you and tell everybody where you are speaking from today. All right. Well, I'm in San Antonio, Texas. And yeah, I, I like, you know, that we both started 2003 and how you introduce me with uh, just, you know, that, that you didn't just read the bio. <laughs> <laughs> like you really, you really, you know, put it out there in a great way. Made it sound a lot, lot uh, more interesting. I was excited. I was like, "Who's he going to be talking with?" But, but it was actually me. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely, Danny. Well, you know, we are in a mastermind together, and masterminds. Being a, a member of a mastermind has just been such a huge part of my real estate investing business. I really started getting involved in masterminds. Right now, I'm in three <laughs> wow. masterminds. I uh, got involved back in 2009. And so, you know, when you hang around people that are, of, you know, of like minds and you're helping each other in your business, it's, it's bound to grow, right? Absolutely. I'm a part of two, been a part of probably six, I think, in, in, in my, you know, in my investing career. And it was a pivotal, pivotal moment uh, in, in the first one that I joined where I was, I was doing everything in the business. You know, my ex-wife and I were doing everything in our business, wearing all the hats. Um, well, I mean, we had contractors, we had an agent to sell properties, but beyond that, we did everything. And that was eight or nine years. And uh, it wasn't until I joined a mastermind and, and hung out with people that were doing, you know, operating the business in a way that allowed them the time to actually work on the business more than they worked in the business. And, you know, having that firsthand uh, experience with people that were doing it showed that it was completely possible and, and cut out a lot of time and headache and hassle and mistakes. So that was, yeah, that's great. Well, I can certainly relate. I remember um, I had been in the business from 2003 until about 2008, five years. And I came around the corner one night and there was my Carol Joy sitting at the kitchen table crying with three different checkbooks in front of her. And that was at 10 o'clock at night. And um, she told me she couldn't handle it anymore. And I mm -hmm. learned right there that, you know, you can be making a million dollars a year and it doesn't really matter unless we are enjoying what the reason we got into real estate. And that's uh, to enjoy the freedom that comes along with it. So yeah, it took me an entire year to really hone in and start automating my business. So I can definitely relate to your story, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. I, I did a, I had a, a book that I put out a while back called flipping houses exposed. And that was 34 weeks in the life of my business where I documented every single lead that came in. And, you know, I, I basically week by week was breaking down what I spent on marketing, where I put, did my marketing, the leads that came in, all that kind of stuff. But the thing that came out of that was, out of that 34 weeks, I generated 495 motivated seller leads. So these are qualified leads where people called or submitted on my website that they wanted an offer on their house. Guess how many of those I turned into a deal? Probably less than you uh, would have desired. <laughs> right. I wouldn't bring it up, if I, but yeah, it was, it was about 11 during that 34 weeks. Woo! And, right. Yeah. So that's about one out of every 45. And so a lot of people, you know, got into this business after reading that book and would tell me it was so great because it showed me it was a numbers game. But it wasn't until a little bit later that I realized when looking back, it was like I was killing myself trying to have more success by doing more of the same thing that I had original success with. So it was OK when, you know, I was generating and doing maybe 20 to 30 deals a year. It was it was OK to, to be focused mainly on the lead generation. Right. If I want to do more deals, I've got to get more leads. I mean, in my mind, that's that's how it was. I don't have a business background. I wasn't structured in business. And and looking back in hindsight, you know, it was it was treating it like a hobby. You know, it really was just, hey, I'm having fun. I'm doing that, which is great. But it comes at a price. And that price is that that hamster wheel of, you know, having some success and trying to have more success by just doing more of the same thing without really dialing anything in. Right. What's really looking at the numbers. What's your conversion now compared to when you started? Well, now I'm, I'm actually back to, you know, operating as a sole solopreneur with the, the real estate and just doing rental properties. But we did grow from, from that. We were doing everything and built a team 
And we got to the point with the team where we were getting about one out of every five leads became a deal. So, well, that's, that's different than one out of every 40 or 50. Right, right, right. So looking back, you know, had we had the team, had we had the business dialed in and this doesn't even require a team, it really just dials, like, you know, requires somebody to know what's going on in their business and fix the parts that are broken because it wasn't so much the leads were a problem. It was what we were doing once the leads came into our business. Right. So, and, and uh, in addition to not only what you were uh, doing with them, but what you were not doing with them. <laughs> right, that's probably the big, yeah, that's the bigger, the bigger <laughs> issue. Right. So what, what, you know, what happened, what made the tra transition, you know, obviously the team helped because as a one man show, taking the calls, going on appointments, uh, you know, scheduling contractors, checking on jobs, you get to where you're having a lot of appointments and meetings with different people. And when those motivated sellers are calling, if you can't take those calls right away, that's number one, that's a huge problem. Somebody has to live answer that call right away because that's truly motivated seller. The one that's saying, Hey, just get over here. I wanted this thing done yesterday. I don't, I'm just done. If you're not the first person that answers that call, whoever is, is getting the deal most likely. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, having a way, no matter what you do. And I, I did this business three years part-time while I was a software developer working for a defense contractor where I couldn't even have my cell phone with me at my job. Um, I, I, now it's been long enough. So, uh, you know, I had it on vibrate and if, if it went off, I would run out into the stairwell and, and return the call, you know, right away because I didn't want to miss out on those. So anyway, once you, once you do that, make sure you're answering all those calls you know, having those come in, what happens with the building of rapport, um, talking with that seller, listening to them, not just asking for all the details of the house and just being all about that and, and scheduling an appointment just being done. There's there's a lot that goes into building that rapport with the seller. Um, and, and most of my, almost all of my deals came from motivated seller, direct to seller marketing. Uh, I just find that those were always the best deals and helped us actually get through that that market correction back in 07, 08 um, yeah. by, by just going direct to seller, you know, and getting those great deals. Mm -hmm.